Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new Modix video. Today we're going over a quick beginner's guide to scavengers to help you get started and get ahead of the competition quickly. We've got a ton to talk about in this video so if you do enjoy it please be sure to hit that sub button as we are uploading daily scavengers content as well as daily live streams. Without any further ado let's hop directly into it. To start we're going to be going over the basics of the game and if this doesn't interest you go to the time frames in the description and find what does. In scavengers you load into the map with 19 other teams of 3. It's a 60 person game and your end objective is to extract on the dropship with the most data points possible. While you're trying to complete this objective, there is a bunch of things that you need to pay attention to. For instance, one of those things is your temperature. At the bottom left, you will see a bar that has a snowflake next to it. This is the temperature that you are at and as this declines, your health will start declining with it. You want to stay warm enough to where your health is not going down and you're not freezing. The way to do this is to use thermal boosts as well as stand next to fires when needed. As you level up past your first couple games, you'll be able to craft thermal boosts. We'll get into that a little later when we talk about research and crafting. Another thing you need to pay attention to is your map. Your map has a lot of useful information, but it might seem a bit confusing at first. The orange data points with numbers next to it are different camps that you can go to in order to collect those data points. You can actually look at your map to see when other people are doing those data points because the numbers will be going down and will be at uneven weird numbers. When the game starts, I highly recommend you look at your map and you find what path you want to go to collect the most data points possible for your team. As the match progresses, there will be purple data point centers which are higher level content. For instance, large bosses will spawn here and much harder camps to clear. These usually will reward around 50 to 100 data points and can be massive for your team. Keep in mind, they also will be much harder to complete. Data point camps aren't the only kind of camps in scavengers. There's also ammo camps, med camps, and armor camps. These all give loot based on what they are called. For instance, the med camp gives you different medical items. These can be extremely useful to stop by as you're rotating through your different data point collection sites. There are also orange satellites that you will see on your map, and these are data point deposit sites. In scavengers, if you die, you have 60 seconds until you revive, assuming that you have teammates alive. The downside to dying though is the fact that you lose at least half the data points that were on you. In order to combat this, you're able to go to these data point deposit sites, deposit those data points, and they are secured for your team. The final basic thing you need to pay attention to is your energy which you can find at the bottom left. As you sprint, jump, and do things of that nature, your energy will go down. As you deplete your energy, a lighter color striped bar will start filling from right to left. This bar slowly decreases your energy maximum. In order to combat this, you need to eat food at the correct times in order to refill that energy bar. Now that is mostly all of the basics of the game. This next part we're going to talk about is crafting. In order to craft in-game, you need to click C on your keyboard to pull up the menu. Each item that you craft will cost a different amount of scrap, which you can pick up by killing enemies, doing objectives, and things of that nature. The main thing that most people craft first is their signature weapon for whatever explorer they are using. You can craft this signature weapon after you pass level 2 within your match. After this, upgrading shields is almost mandatory, as well as getting whatever side gadgets such as thermal boosts, grenades, and maybe a good secondary weapon that you like. You'll notice that when you first start playing, you don't have many options to craft, it's simply your signature weapon and your shield. Do not worry, because as you keep playing, you'll be able to research more things, which we will talk about right now. You find your research station in the main menu and here you will see a couple of different things. One of the main things to pay attention to here is deconstructing salvage. As you play the game, you'll pick up salvage that you can deconstruct. As you deconstruct this salvage, it'll give you different items and materials that are needed to research other items. After deconstructing all of your salvage, check into the menus and see what you're able to craft. At the start, I would highly recommend researching a thermal boost, mark 2 grenade, and a couple of the sidearm weapons. As you continue to play, you'll get more salvage that you can then deconstruct, which you can then use to research even more items. You also will see a battery that has energy in it at the top right of your screen. Every time you research something, it uses this battery's energy, and you have to wait for it to recharge before you can continue researching. And like I said earlier, as you level up and deconstruct more salvage, you will find a ton of really cool things you can research, including certain perks for different agents and some really cool weapons. Next up, let's talk about explorers and exactly how you should be using them and how you should be selecting them. 
There are seven different explorers in Scavengers, and each of them have their own unique ability as well as their own unique signature weapon. I would highly recommend going through, checking all of them out, figure out what weapons, abilities they have, and figure out exactly who you want to play who fits your playstyle well. Along with that, if you're playing with friends, try to make a team that works really well together. If you have three explorers that are all close range, rushing characters, you can do some crazy damage. If you can work out a cool team composition that works for your team, you can go absolutely crazy. Along with picking explorers that work for your team composition, picking the weapons that you're going to be using is equally as important. There are so many different weapons and scavengers, so you have full reign to figure out exactly what kind of playstyle you want to play with. I do have to admit, not all the weapons are balanced nearly enough yet, but if you can find a weapon that you really enjoy using and learn how to use it well, I'm sure that you can make it work. Something that I would really focus on while playing is making sure you have a weapon that can do damage at distance as well as do damage at close range. The reason for this is because many fights and scavengers will end up being at a far range at first and then you will end up converging on the enemy teams and fighting very close. After playing over the past couple days, I found that the shotgun is an extremely useful close range weapon, as well as the sniper rifle and the semi-automatic assault rifles being extremely useful at a distance. Take this how you please, but definitely try out a couple of different guns before you set in stone what your loadout is every game. That is going to wrap up our Scavengers Quick Start Beginner Guide. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe to this channel for that daily Valorant content. We stream over here on YouTube on this channel, as well as over on Twitch. It is the first link in the description, twitch.tv slash carnageod. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video, and I will see you in the next one.